The Raptors fall to the Indiana Pacers, 140 to 123. Welcome to Raptors tonight, live from Real Sports. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Paul Jones, Alvin Williams, and Sherman Hamilton. Fellas, pretty good crowd we got here tonight. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Talking about you, Al. Um, all right, kind of uh, sentimental always at the end of the season, at least for, for Sherm. For some, uh, <laughs> for, for Sherm and I. Um, just what, what kind of impression, Sherm, do you think fans left the arena with tonight? Well, I think they, they've got to feel good about some of the young pieces that the Raptors have. And, you know, you didn't get to see a finished product. You didn't get to see Scotty and Jakob end this season. You know, Emmanuel and RJ in and out of the lineup. So I think there's some promise there thinking that when those, that group gets together, based on what transpires over the offseason and internal growth and improvement, that they're going to have a young group that they're going to be able to grow with and enjoy watching them grow. So I, I think the win-loss situation got swept away a while ago when the moves were made this season, and it became about what this group can be. Mm -hmm. And I think there's optimism there about what this group can be moving forward with the right pieces around them. So I think if I'm a fan leaving the building, I'm pretty excited about what I may see come next fall in terms of how this group has matured and what they do when they hit the floor. Al, uh, anything stick out to you that was noteworthy of, of tonight? As far, feel like as, the far end of, as the fans leaving? Well, this, the game in general, did it feel like oh. the end of the... I was about to say, the fans probably worried about the Blue Jays' traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if they were worrying about much of the team. Yeah. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Yeah. You know? Uh, did it feel like a, an end of the <laughs> season? <laughs> End of the season to you because it yeah. felt like it's gone fast for me. Yeah, it feels like the end of the season. I mean, you start seeing, well, you know, you know, I mean, you know the record, just whatever. But to Sherman's point, I think if you are a fan, like I think you should be excited. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you should be excited. I think, you know, when you have the pieces that were missing, and then the pieces that you saw in RJ and quickly and even Grady. You saw pieces, you'd be like, wow, what if all this was together? Kelly Olenek start being more aggressive, start doing things. But I think ultimately, I think the improvement going into the, this summer, how these guys improved. Scotty Barnes, he really improved from last year to this year, shooting, the maturity. So I think that, that's, that's huge. But if I'm, if I'm the Raptors, and I don't know sports science and all that stuff, I want these guys to adopt Mikel Bridges' attitude. He's not missing games. And I'm not talking if you're hurt or whatever. The rest games and all that for rest, I need more than that. I think for this team right now where they are, be that young, you have to make a commitment to excellence. And I think the way you do that is being out there. Now, of course, they don't have all the control, and I don't, I don't know what that behind that scene, but I think the mentality, these young guys, and I'm talking about everybody on this team, the young guys, they have to play. I don't want to see them sitting out and all that stuff have to play and continue to get better and set the tone of what this organization should be about. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I mean, I think you saw glimpses, and we, we talked about this, Randy. Right after the All-Star break, when they had everybody healthy and they, they looked like they were going to run down Atlanta in the 10th spot there. They, they were, things looked good, and then all of a sudden, injuries, we didn't know that RJ, or it wasn't public anyway, that RJ and Emmanuel were carrying other things, personal things with them. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, I, to Sherm's point, I think there's a, and Al's point too, I think there's an optimism there of what happens if you look at your young core with quickly Barrett, you have the likes of Grady and Ochai, you put Scotty Bax in, in the mix, a couple of vets, Pirtle and Kelly, and then now you start, like, do they keep Gary Trent? Mm -hmm. Do they sign him and trade him? Like, what? Like, what do you do with Bruce Brown? Like, there's lots of there's some lots of moving parts, mm -hmm. but you can see a collective. And and to your point about the fans leaving the arena, they've left the arena under championship circumstances before. Yeah. So I think a rebuild, a reload, a reorganization, whatever it is with the team, gets easier when you know, okay, you can do this, and this is what it's gonna lead to. We've, 
we've seen what the view is like from the top of the Ferris wheel. So I, I, I definitely think there's reason for optimism. And to the other, the last thing that these guys said, Popeye Jones had a great line. He said to me in 97, he said, Jonesy, players are made when the lights go down. What are you doing in the summer? What, what are you working on? We, we saw a guy like DeMar bring something back every year. We watched the guy who was a Hall of Famer and Kyle Lowry improve every year he was in Toronto. So for that whole list of Raptor players, Ochai, Grady, Scotty, RJ, Quick, like what are you doing this summer? What are you bringing back to add to your skill set that's also going to contribute to the team? So I, I, I think there's definite reason for optimism. I, I love how you remember quotes from 97 because I can't remember what I ate for lunch. Just, <laughs> that, hey, those, those are my formative years yeah, as a broadcaster, yeah. no, and I'm sure. talking to yeah. guys that are in the league. Yeah. And the league wasn't like it was now where it seemed like it was equal opportunity and everybody yeah. could get in. You had, to, you had to bust your hump to be in the league. Yeah. Like I look at when Alvin was in the league and like we had good players that couldn't get into the league because of how tough it was. And those, when those guys are telling me that, they're going away to work on stuff this summer, I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, you're already in the league. They're like, hey man, there's a difference between being drafted and having a career. And if I want to have a career, I got to work in the summer. That was the thing we used to always say, everybody, it's an opportunity for everybody to get drafted. You know, some have more of an opportunity, but everyone can get their name called. Everyone can not stay. Right. This is a new crop coming in, right? right? So somebody that was here today, be gone tomorrow so that's the biggest thing like you can you can be drafted but how long are you going to stay that was the real challenge in the league almost in the league i don't know what you got right, this french uh... e thing happening for. <laughs> bring in our fan of the night please give a warm welcome to cole come on in cole oh hey cole what's up buddy hey, cole. hey. How are you? have a seat i like your shirt I should say basketball but we like it this is Sherman Hamilton. What's up, Paul? How you doing, buddy? Alvin Williams. What's up, hey, Paul Cole. Jones. Hello. You have a question. What do you got? Yeah. Um, Alvin, what was your favorite season of your basketball career? My favorite season of my basketball career. Oh, like the hard question. one, Cole. They yeah. Like the hard one. Ooh. It might have been my senior year in high school. Nice. We were 24 and 1. I was the man, I got to shoot all the shots, you know, and it was, it was all that. And then I went to being a freshman, I wasn't the man, I was on the bench, so I appreciated my senior year in high school. But my best year for my uh, professional career was probably my first year when I was drafted, and then right after that was 2001 where the Raptors made the uh, playoffs for the second time in franchise history. Nice, nice. Do you remember that? 2001? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Cole, Cole, you can YouTube it. Alvin made one of the most famous shots. And, and he did the fist history. pump. And then the fist pump. It wasn't even an air punch. No, no, it was an underhand, like, kind of at the hip. Yeah, it's like yeah. a gut. Yeah. It's like a gut. Yeah. 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 And you, like you and Chris, when you said they used to fight and yeah. they didn't want to hurt each other as brothers, so they wouldn't punch in the face, so they just give each other gut punches. <laughs> I told them that wasn't a real fight. That yeah. was like a love war. You play basketball? Uh, no, I play hockey, but... Like, so you know about fighting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, me and my dad sometimes go to like a gym and play basketball, and I always beat him in horse. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. All right. You're not talk supposed talk. to tell everybody. Talk that talk. Cool. Out. Talk that talk. Cole, do you do you want to uh, do you want to spin for a prize? Sure. Okay. Can I see your your shoot your form shoot? I saw you practice. Oh, lefty. Are you a lefty? lefty. Yeah. I'm All right. Oh, me right, too. So, so so extend it. Yeah, yeah, you want, yeah, you want that, bang, and snap that wrist. There you go. Okay, Ooh. I like it. I feel like you're going to make it on your first try. Yeah, let's go, Cole. Let's go over here. That's, uh, you know, you just got tips from an NBA player. An old NBA the former the Cole. The consulting fee on that is unbelievable. I like it. I like it. But you're a scorer, so you can. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. The Cole, half score. Okay, give, give it a, a good spin. We got. Score keeper. Oh, you want to give it a little hoodie? Huh? Depends what you want. Hold on. Hoodie. We don't have a hoodie. Hoodie. Okay, give it hoodie. A, All give right. it a hoodie. big spinny. Oh, I was going to say, we can get rid of the, the, the hockey hoodie and give him a basketball. Tell me what you want. Backpack. Okay, we got. We don't have the backpack. Get a hoodie and a backpack. Just give it another spin. <laughs> We're running out of prizes. Million dollars. $50 gift card. Well, I knew it. What? How about you pick three things on that table? Yeah, there you that? Go. 
That's better, right? You got to shoot for it, though. You got to shoot for it. Let's see that form. You're going to put air in the ball? <laughs> no. It's to save the equipment. Oh, good try. We got hey. another one. I like that. What like we that. talk about? Let's make some noise for uh, Cole here. Let's go, Cole. Go, Cole. Hey, one more, one more. Extended elbow in, extended, snap that wrist. Oh, we got one more. <laughs> Bang. Ah. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Yeah. Hey, good job. What do you want here? What do you want? Hey, just like the host. Better. You can take the basketball for sure. Oh, wow. Take take two more prizes. Yo, do you, do you guys like buffalo you chicken? They got buffalo chicken sliders. Take, take the Scotty one. Barnes All right. jersey. All right. What else? One more. One more. Wait, you told us the Raptors basketball t-shirt. All right, show all the prizes. Do you have anybody, anything? Say, look at camera one and say. I got uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> and do you have a shout out? Anybody at home watching? My mom. Nice. Thank you for creating me. <laughs> she gave me all the powers to do this. Oh, I love that. Thanks, Cole. High five. Round of applause for Cole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. This is way too much these days. Well done, buddy. Well done. Good job, buddy. All right, Cole. Man. <laughs> hey, thank the store? you. The store going to drop you Cole off anymore? made out like a bandit. You were. I was. Not Cole. Thank you to my mom for creating me. That's, a, that's an all-time shout-out. Keeping it, keeping it real. That's an all-time all shout-out. All the way out. real. Kids know way too much these days. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sherm, how do you think the Raptors tonight uh, defended Pascal? <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah. Uh, at times, I felt like they knew knew what he was gonna no, do. That's, that's, that's a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> it's ending with a bang right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you got nothing? No, I, I, I got nothing. <laughs> All right, I got another question for you. If you don't like that one? Go ahead. When I watch T.J. McConnell, this is like. I should, probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I, when I watched him in his early career, I'm like, how is that guy that successful in the NBA? Because he's not a shooter, right? I wouldn't say he's the tallest guy in the league. So when you watch him, what do you think makes him so successful? He knows how to play. Okay, that's great stuff. He does know how to play. The, the guy knows how to play, and sometimes the best thing you can do is stay away from things you can't do. Exactly. And emphasize what you can do. Yeah. And he was a pest when he came to the league. He was an irritant. But you see his game develop, and you see that, that little mid-range jump shot. He's got that little step to the side where he can get to the baseline and knock down a little floater. He's got some offensive stuff now that rounds out the other things that he brought to the game. And I think sometimes we get focused on scoring so much that when guys are in the league and doing so many valuable things, mm -hmm. it kind of gets swept under the radar. But yeah. this guy's tough, man. He plays tough. He, he to me, he's a he's a a pace changer when he comes into the game with the way that he plays. And I, I've been impressed with him since he's been in the league. It's weird to see a, a guy that can't shoot be that successful. Listen, he's yeah, like he's, Rondo. Yeah, Ron, Ron, Yeah, he's Rondo's a son. Got a little more height. Tj Tj's a son of a coach. So you know he's thinking the game. And to Sherm's point, he doesn't, he doesn't stray from his lane. Here's what I do. I make other people better. I pick up 85, 90 feet. I make them take time off the clock. I'm in the passing lane. I'm taking charges. I'm digging down. Like these are things that don't always show up in the box score, but they're helpful to your team. And I, I just think he does a good job of playing his role and not trying to do anything else. So, Al, so, you know, real quick, yeah. I worked with TJ early in his career yeah. with the Sixers. And TJ, I don't want to say he can't shoot. That's like, you know what I mean? Everybody in the NBA can shoot. I saw Rondo bank. No, er teams. everybody can shoot in the NBA, but that's another story. Okay. But TJ, we see what he's doing now. It's a product of everything he did early on. Like, I think he went to Arizona first, transferred yep. to Duquesne, so he can play. When he was with the 76ers, he did everything in that locker room, everything in that practice to make sure he stayed in the league or he remained on that team until he got his opportunity. You never know when your opportunity is going to come, whether it's through injury, whether it's through the Sixers with their process and players that you really don't know getting in some playing time and opportunity and they continue to develop. He did everything 
outside of actually playing those minutes to remain a professional, remain in the league, and then his game start continue to develop because he could play, mm -hmm. and now he's showing, getting opportunities. I was here, I had a close friend who was with the Toronto Raptors, and I won't say any names, very talented player, very talented player. And at the same time, Carlos Arroyo was here. Mm -hmm. And my friend, Philip, I grew up with him. He wasn't able to do the other things that a third point guard was required to do, that you're not gonna play. You don't have to make every assist, you don't have to make every point, but you have to encourage, you have to hustle. You have to do the certain things, the little things. And TJ always did the little things. Now, guess what? Year nine, I didn't realize this was the ninth year. Yeah. He's scoring 22 points. He's going on a playoff team. He's somebody that's leaned upon coming off the bench, that's leading the best, best bench, bench in, the, yeah. in, the, in the game. And he's the primary guy off of that. So mm -hmm. to any young person, anybody, he did everything else outside of the actual production on the court mm -hmm. to remain and give himself an opportunity to be where he is today, first and foremost. When I was talking about Rondo, I saw him, you know, he's a guy that was labeled a non-shooter, but right. warming up before a Raptors game, he'd bang 15 threes in a row. You know, it's so... You were counting? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not sure what that means for your discussion. Well, I'm, I'm saying, why can a guy that's labeled a non-shooter be able to shoot like that, but then not in a game? Because the game's different than standing exactly. with no one guarding you. Exactly. No time, no officials. But some guys no shot clock. Some guys will make 15, 20 in a row and then make shots in the game. But, you but might, he, didn't, he didn't need to, though. Like with the team that. But it would have helped. Helped help what? He won a championship. He won, well, I know. He's one I of know. the best guards that ever played. With the yeah. team that he was on, he was basically, and, and guys talk about it, knowing the other team's plays, disrupting stuff. Getting the ball to to like Ray Allen to Garnett, he didn't he didn't need like. Here's a simple thing, he stayed away from things that he wasn't as strong as, but the things that he was strong at, he was the best. He was very <laughs> sure. very strong at. For so, sure. what's your choices here? But the yeah, choices you say, here to help you win by doing what exactly. you can help you win. That's did it. You, did you say like why could he make shots? And well, warm ups. Why, why yeah, not why, why is with it no guy, officials and no time and it's kinda care. like you get ready it? to go out, right? And you look in the mirror and you say, damn, I look good. I'm gonna go out there and kill him. And then you get someplace and there's like fifteen other dudes that look better than you and nobody's talking to you. I'll like, give it damn. to you better. Sure. I'll give you a better example. Better. It's like you that get ha ready that happens to go all out the time. And you're getting dressed and you put some music on and you're jamming. You think you're pumping it. Then that you get to the club. Ain't the same music. Yeah, then you get to the club, it's not the same music, and you can't really dance. Yeah, yeah, but that, that doesn't happen. It does, though. Ah, okay. Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's different for you. You know it's different. I know, I know. It's I know, I know. But no, um, it doesn't. And Sometimes it doesn't tramp. But Rondo and certain players, to Sherm's point, when you, when you do something very well and very, at a high level, it masks that those other things. Yeah. Today's NBA is so different because it's systematic. It's not based on individuals as much. It's based on a system. And you need your corner shooters. You need this person. You need the roller. You need this. It's like five guys and everybody is like a machine. Where back in the day, you got this guy that will orchestrate everything. He's our scorer. He's our rebounder. All right, that's it. You go get the rebound, you go score, and you set it up. Mm -hmm. It's not as different now. Mm -hmm. So today's NBA, that's how different it is than it was when Rondo was playing and even further along. And, that, and that's a lesson to coaches, too. Because you always hear coaches talk about what guys can't do. Well, what can they do? And how do I take advantage of that? And scouts. When, you get, when they're scouting, everything. Well, he can't shoot. He can't yeah. go left. Well, he yeah, but what can he well, do? What can he do? Yeah. Oh, well, shit. He's okay. seven feet and he's uh, athletic and oh, okay. okay. But they always try to tell you what you can't do. Don't let, don't never let somebody tell you what you can't do, brother. Oh, I know. I, Life lesson. Listening to that when you when you talk to me. <laughs> um, okay, that that brings me to another guy that's polarizing in that way, and that's Zach Eady. We saw him in in the national championship. They fell short, but he had another monster game. And obviously, the question is. Can this guy function at a level to be helpful to an NBA team? Uh, I'd love to hear Alvin's opinion on that. My opinion, yeah, for, for sure. He can. <laughs> he, he can function. And the ironic thing is, in a, in a 
upsetting thing for me. If this was 15 years ago, he'd probably be the number, number one, one pick. pick. Number one. Number like, one. No like question. The game, like the game has changed, but again, the system analytically where everybody evaluates from a different lens now. And there's so many people that evaluate and have these opinions on certain players. They look at numbers first and foremost, which really don't look at the eye, they give the eye test credit. Zach Eady is somebody that you can definitely use in the NBA. But will a team rely on him? Can he play defense? Can he switch out the way they have bigs? Can he hedge? Can he get back? No one posts up, so he's going to be on a perimeter a lot. Now, what, what, like, what is it? Is his usage rate going to be enough that's going to make up for his deficiencies defensively? And I don't think analytically, and I don't know athletically, if he fits that. He would, he would, I think he would have to go to the right team to play that way. But you can't tell me there isn't a place for a guy that, I mean, is he a Vita Zubac? Can he do, can he do that? He's got about 30, 40 pounds on Zubac. Okay. But I'm just saying though, like, it, it, you know, to, to Al's point, I think it depends on who has him and how they play. Is he, could he be, could he be like Valanchunas? Could, could he be like one of those guys? I mean, that's, I mean, that's what you you got to kind of look at. And I'm just talking, not talking about numbers. I'm talking about the eye test, Cause, changing ends of the floor, all of those things. That's what you got to look at. There are players like this that that have these great college careers, and one of the former Raptors, Tyler Hansborough. You know, set all the records at North Carolina, and it didn't translate on that level at this stage. Does it feel like he's in that realm to you, no, or no? no? It doesn't feel like that. Tyler Hansbro was an undersized big. Yeah. And in as system. you know, in college, you can, you know, if you're you're big and strong, you can kind of run over some people in college. You get to the NBA, you're not running over anybody. Yeah. These yeah. guys are big. They're strong. They're faster than you. It's, it's not the same thing, but Zach is big. He is, he's got that size already, mm -hmm. so it's different. I don't think it's the same thing. And I don't think the expectations are the same as a Tyler Hansbro. I think with Zach, I, I think you almost look at him as a guy who you're going to have to figure out how to acclimate to the NBA game. Mm -hmm. That's going to take some patience. That's going to take some working with to change some of the things that he does. And you're going to try and speed him up at times. See if he can move faster. See if he can slide out there on the pick and roll and not just play that drop defense that he played his whole time at Purdue. He's going to have to move his feet a bit more. And I think if you look at it from that perspective, it's a bit of an NBA project with a kid who's already dominant mm -hmm. in college. Mm -hmm. That's different than Tyler Hansbrook to me. I, I, think, I think it's going to be very, very, and I could be wrong, and I hope I am wrong. I think it's going to be very, very hard for him to adjust and really get a true opportunity because of the way, not to his fault, he can play. I'll take him with my team. I'll, if I'm, if we say we pay, yeah. pick up, I'm taking him. But it's going to, today's NBA is going to be very, very, you saw the Pacers today? 140, 140 points. points. Yeah. Yeah. And how many post-ups did you see? That's, like, not, it's, that's not the kind of game. And that's why I that think game for him. he has to, if he's, to Sherm's point about the project, he's got to go to the right right team that's going to play that way and use him in that way and he is a kid that is coming out unlike other kids that are learning the NBA game and basketball at the same time he's learned basketball that's strong now you yeah. have to teach him the NBA game which my is different my, my bad Jonesy yeah. it looked like that for the Oreo Vanilla. What do we got here? Where do we yeah. okay that, yeah. that's, that's mine the, on the end so this, on behalf of real <laughs> we sports, share that uh, this is just a milkshake, baby. Oh, man, thank you very much. What, what, oh, what man. do you have? Appreciate you, big dog. So, right here we have um, a carrot cake. Two yep. Oreos and a strawberry. Pineapple, Which one? Crushed pineapple. Okay. Oreos. And some graham crackers. Sherm, you got a choice? And then this is our Oreo Another, sundae. This is here. the Sherm special right oh, yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate right, that. Thank, thank you, my man. Appreciate thank you. you. We got, we got, all right, yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, all season, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my man. Strawberry milkshake. Hey, thank you, buddy. There's a half an hour right there on the treadmill, right there. <laughs> what, what you what you want, sir? None of that. You don't? No, no. They were out of. They were All right, leave that to me and Al. Then. Sir wanted the strawberry cheesecake, and they were out of the cheesecake. So I'm good. I'm good. I'm just saying. I'm just like you. You, you was kind of like a little kid. Like you didn't get what you wanted, so you pouted a little bit. I don't well, want that. If I die from allergies, 
You think I should eat it? But you're only allergic to peanuts and stuff. Oh, is that it? Yeah. I'll that's send what I you thought. A text about what I'm allergic to off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just trying to kill me on the last <laughs> home. <laughs> now hey, you're my now man, you know Bob. how I feel. Kill me oh, with those glares. <laughs> kill me with those eyes. Just kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about Vince Carter. <laughs> Worrying me, dog. <laughs> He's going to be inducted into the uh, Come NBA on, man. Hall of Fame. We talked about Vince last show, dog. We're not going to keep talking about Vince. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't? No. All right, let's talk about Vince. Yeah, we, My we, man. We, didn't, we didn't talk about Vince. We talked about him on the pregame show, I'm sure. Um, oh, look at him. I liked When you think of the impact, what is the main thing that comes to mind? Sherm? Oh, Vince Carter? Yeah. Well, first of all, basketball has always been big in, our, in this city and our country. Basketball... It's always had a following. Never had a platform though. Vince gave it a platform on the highest level. And you can tell the, the influence by what we're seeing in the NBA today. All these, these young guys, they talk about having the opportunity to touch and feel the game by coming to the what was called Air Canada Center at the time and being able to see a game with Vince Carter playing. That to me was something that wasn't available prior to their generation. And once they got that feel, they took off with it. It's, mm -hmm. it's real now, it's, it's tangible. It's not just something that's over there, it's right here. Mm -hmm. And I think Vince, with the way that he played and the way that, that he kind of took the NBA by storm, not only did he put the Raptors on the map, he put Toronto on the map, he put Canada on the map, and all of a sudden now kids were saying, that can be me. I can get there, I can play in this league. And now we're seeing an influx and it's not gonna stop anytime soon. So Vince deserves a lot of credit for that, but I just wanna make it clear. There's, this has been a basketball loving city country before Vince got here. He just put it on a platform that the people here just weren't able to do in the past. And definitely more people started watching playing because of that, I mean, you know, my guy was, was Damon Stoudemire before Vince. That kind of got me yeah, in yeah. love with the game. It was a time when, for the non-basketball people, for the casual fan in Toronto, it gave them something to hold on to. Like Sherm said, and, and Alvin knows this as he played here, Toronto always had players. And Canada always had good talent. But it kind of, it, it, it opened up more when Vince got here. Mm -hmm. You think about it, and I say this all the time, Vince led the NBA in all-star voting from Toronto, where people saw Toronto as an outpost in the NBA. But Vince led, the, and this, we're not talking about voting on your computer or on your phone or anything back then. You had to punch a ballot, go and put it in the ballot box. He wasn't in L.A., he wasn't in New York, he was in Toronto, and he led the NBA in voting for the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. You look at a guy like Kevin Durant who says, yeah, my favorite team growing up was the Raptors. NBC was changing their national TV schedule to put Vince on. So the NBA jumped on his back, too. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of a bigger impact you could have. Mm. Al, thoughts? No, it's interesting to hear you guys' perspective because you are from Canada, and like you guys both said, this I remember go, playing St. John's and throwing Barrett, and then they had another guard. I forgot it went to St. John's, a smaller guard. Colin Charles. Colin Charles. So I remember those things, but you didn't, you didn't realize the impact until later, just like Vince didn't realize the impact. But I think... Give Vince all the props. But I feel like Vince was in a heck of a situation with the veterans that he had. I mean, the veterans from D. Brown, Oakley, Kevin Willis, Muggs, Muggs, Dell, Del, Antonio, Antonio, like all these guys, man. And he received it, but they were really, they, they showed him what hard work looks like. And he showed them like the difference, like, yo, we got, I've been with Michael Jordan, 
And I was talking to Vince. Oak been with Michael Jordan. D. Brown was with Larry Bird. Kevin Willis with Akeem Olajuwon. Like, these guys, Antonio's with Reggie Miller. Like, so all the information that Vince was getting was coming from this. Best of like, the best. Like, like Incredible. Was, yeah. And they would, they would sit there and they would tell stories. Tracy, the same thing. And of course, with Butch Carter as the coach. So what you saw the product, because Vince coming out of college, of course he was a top pick, but no one had that expectation. He received a lot of information, and he had some old head dogs to show them every day how to be a professional. So I think when people do say, or they say Vince Carter changed this, and without those other guys, those guys don't get this enough credit. Like that infrastructure of that team during that time, 1997, 1988, I, I don't believe there would be a Vince Carter that early on. Man, you develop it that early on without those guys. Those guys need more credit when you talk about a Vince Carter. Oh, they, they would, they, it just wouldn't be. Oak I, I used like to always that. say that. Oak used to say, we were a great band. Vince and Tracy were the lead singers and the backup band was good. And that's to Alvin's point, like you think about it, you know, the people that were there, pretty good. And, and Al, don't sell yourself short, you know, you're, you're a worker out there. I, I said Damon Stoudemire as my favorite Raptor, but when you came to Toronto, you became my next favorite Raptor. I love the way you worked and I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being uh, real there for sure. Number, number two is the first uh, person you, you to went, lose. You, went, you, you passed him, you passed him. No, Damon Stott and Damon Stoudemire was somebody. Yeah. Like when you really start thinking about players that made an impact. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of those players when you go and play against him, you know, you like you get your rest. You know, Vince was that type of guy, but Damon Stoudemire probably was the first guy. And when you start talking about that, so it was a lot of play. A lot of great players came through here, man. Yeah. A lot of great players. I don't know if they were highlighted as much as Vince. When you talk about a Mark Jackson, you talk about a Rod Street, you talk about a lot of. Great players, yeah. like great players. Akeem. Akeem Olajuwon, and of course, I guess you want the level of play, but you had some legendary players just to come through here that we had a chance to share knowledge with. Mm -hmm. Young players had a chance to share knowledge. So it was, it, it was something, but again, I think the older players that, that spent like the, the end, ending years here, you have to get them, Mark Jackson, you have to give them credit for Vince's development and how he played and how he was able to go out there and play basketball. Yeah. Great stuff, guys. Uh, let's let's stop it there. Uh, next game for the Raptors, Wednesday against the Brooklyn Nets. Tip off at 7.30. Raptors tonight will go live on YouTube shortly. Our last game. show, dog. Before we go, the uh, last show of the season at Real Sports, and we just want to thank all the chefs and staff for yeah. the great food staff. and support. Amazing, all season long. Big shout out to the crew as well, sound technician Adam White. Technical producer Nick Montero, videographer Danny Patterson, our producer director Christian Urban, for sure, Paul. The Alvin. real MVPs. Yeah, the real MVPs. I'm Randy Urban. Thank you for watching. Who See are you? Next time. Jazzy.